things you own end up owning you. We can talk about whatever you want. I found out about you through our favorite uh, methed out uh, doctor who goes shirtless into grocery stores and screams that everything is bullshit. Vegetables are bullshit. You know, that one guy sounds like this. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, I think. Uh, because I forgot, I think you did some sort of response video to some of his mm. dumb mm. things that he says mm. to like a study that he pulls out from whatever however many years ago that, you know, ha has like a, a tiny little bit in it that he pulls out and then exaggerates it to the extreme. Um, and then at the same time, uh, Mr. Hugh, the guy that just doesn't really say anything, but says a lot of stuff, Mr. Huberman, <laughs> he released a podcast about, <laughs> he released a podcast about saunas. And he said like, you know, all right, if you saw that, you're just going to fucking live forever. That's, that's like, <laughs> that was literally the gist of it. Okay. And then I really started going through all of your videos and stuff. And, and cause you, you made a great, uh, you know, debunk or whatever the fuck you want to call it. You know, I know that it's just a, you know, a title to get people, whatever the clickbait title, but you, you made a great video about it because you actually broke it down to like what it actually meant. Okay. <laughs> and so that's the way I found out about you. Um, and then, yeah, man. And, you know, take it from there. How did you, did, did, were you always doing this? Were you always sort of, uh, you know, listening to health gurus online and kind of just really trying to explain to people what they're really saying and what they're, what it doesn't really mean and what it means, et cetera. Um, I mean, I've done this, I guess, like for five years. Uh, okay. I was originally like super uh, influenced by Stefan Guinet, which is, mm. he's a guy who's into obesity. And then also somebody you had on, Denise Minger, they had like a really big impact on wow. me like, reading their wow. blogs, wow. like back in the day. And I think a few years, um, I guess I started really getting active, like, I don't know, 2016. Mm -hmm. I wasn't that good. Like I was, you know, I've gotten better over time, but um like everybody the video stuff is only is very recent right i i've only really started playing with uh, youtube recently but uh yeah i mean i guess for like the last five years and then over the, like the last two or three years i've gone really hard at like the big uh -huh. gurus like you know peter atia <laughs> carnivore md huberman <laughs> the beloved Huberman, and Rhonda. those guys the best. um the best yeah yeah and you know, and and to me, there's just sort of a pervasive problem. I don't even want to rant about this too much because it's a kind of cringe to me almost <laughs> now. Because <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> uh, but like, there's this pervasive problem of like people basically overhyping different preferred health interventions, things that maybe have worked for them, um, or things that they can make a lot of money doing, or things that like sound exciting or interesting or big in academia at that time. And then sort of downplaying the the downsides as well. Uh, and then just like, here's what you need to do to live 10 years longer. You just need to go in a sauna and your heat shock proteins will turn on and then your repair systems and shit. Yeah. And, and then you'll you know, look, and, and then you'll look way older like Dave Asprey has. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like that guy has been preaching that <laughs> shit forever, right? And boy, has he aged. Oh awful. my God, he really has. I, I, I would like to hope though, you know, I would like to try to defend i don't defend i think it's probably because he just spends so much time like outdoors do you think do you think that's what it is because I don't, I don't he know, really man. does look 20 years older than he is <laughs> look I, I, but, like but, i really mean this yeah. I, I don't try to pick at people's looks it's not i don't think being healthy is all about looks either don't get me wrong mm -hmm. really i really do yeah, mean that yeah, 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 i'm yeah. just saying for a guy that's doing all these really because <clears throat> some of the stuff he you know sells and promotes is like really fucking up out there you know what i mean like whatever stem cells injections or i mean i guess recently he has kind of stopped doing a lot of that because i'm sure he's i think he's got sued a couple of times or whatever oh has he oh yeah oh, oh yeah yeah there's been like some whatever st stuff that i've heard about um but the point is it's like for doing all these crazy health hacks boy like i would at least want you to look at, like <laughs> at least your age like at least your age right <laughs> he's really accelerated too i think i feel like yeah. he's accelerating <laughs> yes that's what i'm saying dude <laughs> don't do what dave asprey is saying or gonna look like him oh my god oh, it's... yeah I, yeah and i just want i just wanted people to like you know <laughs> to like uh 
do the things that make sense. Don't waste their time doing things that uh, like don't make sense. Don't do what Dave Asprey is doing. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, because, well, ultimately actually it, it went back to the fact that I was, I got interested in obesity at the beginning. Obesity was the main thing. And there are so many like obesity quacks everywhere, like saying oh, obesity is like a carb issue. No, it's like a protein, um, like whatever they, every macronutrient gets blamed and then every yeah. like plants get blamed and animals get blamed but if we just had some consensus about it like here's what the science says here's what we need to do about it then maybe we could solve the problem so if, like my angle was um we need to i need i want to promote science that you know, for which we can get a consensus about. And then all the bullshit around that that's distracting us is I wanted to debunk it because I thought if we promote science that everybody can have a consensus about and everybody starts agreeing, then we can do something about obesity um, as a society. And so that was sort of my mission for a while. And and then I got into all sorts of quackery. Um, and all in the meantime, you were, you were pursuing your PhD, your MD. What were you doing? Yeah, at the, at the beginning, um, you know, during the MD years, uh, I, um, first two years of the MD, the medical degree, I, uh, I was kind of like really into like Michael Pollan and plant-based people. I was like, I was like a, a zealot for plant-based diets and for like Michael Pollan's ideas and yeah. how I, I had some very cringe Facebook groups that I created that I don't <laughs> even want to call, talk about the name of. I thought it was really clever at the time. <laughs> But it was like so cringe. Tell you know? us one. Tell us one, bro. I oh want to hear God. the Oh my God. So there's. <laughs> was it people for one... plants or something like that? Uh -huh. <laughs> Souls no, of man. carrots. Souls of oh carrots. My Michael Pollan. <laughs> there was a group called um, Farmarians. Farmarians. So... <laughs> That's not bad. That's not terrible. That's not bad. <laughs> I know. And you only eat food that comes from farms, all right? Don't I eat guess. food that comes from factories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's not terrible, honestly. I thought it was going to be something, you know. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, fair okay, enough, okay, fair okay. enough. <laughs> so you got into that. Yeah. And by the way, which, and then yeah. Mm -hmm, sorry, I just wanted to say because you we while setting this up, we uh you you let me know that you successfully defended your uh, thesis, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So congratulations on that, sir. Thank you. And your Thank thesis you. was on what was the for for simple minded folk, you know what I mean? Is there a way for you to explain it? Yeah, so uh, when people fast, uh, the ketone, blood ketones go up, as people know, and they also go up on a ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's long been thought that the cause of that is the liver uh, takes basically the free fatty acids the, from the fat, either from your, your body's fat or your the food that you're eating fat, and it turns them into ketones. But it turns out that the uh, colon also has the ability to make ketones in the cecum. Uh, mm. which is right before the colon between the small intestine in the colon and in other animals, it's substantially larger. But it turns out that the colon also has a role there. And the colon can turn free fatty acids, in this case, not necessarily from your food or your adipose, adipose tissue, for, but from the fermentation of your food in your gut. Mm. It can turn it into butyrate, which is a short chain fatty acid that then gets made into ketones and this hasn't been understood or appreciated uh until my project wow. so in my this project is, this we is show... like a recent thing that they uh discovered because i haven't heard of that either man well well, well we're publishing so wow. uh we're still we're still submitting to journals mm -hmm. um just got a first rejection. So hopefully the next <laughs> one. <will work. laughs> nah. I thought it, I thought we were gonna go into the greatest, like the greatest uh, GI journal and, because we're so great and my paper's so good, but no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, though. Congrats, man. Yeah, that's yeah. Still, yeah, that's thank a you. Giant so fucking thing. Uh-huh. I think it's pretty cool. And yeah, it didn't used to be thought that this was the case. It it was known sort of in the distant past, maybe in the 70s or 80s, and it's not being talked about much anymore, but it's been known that ruminants do this. So like goats and sheep and, mm. and cows do this. They they turn it in the ep in the uh epithelium of the colon and the intestinal tract, they turn, they do they undergo ketogenesis, but it's never been accepted. In fact, it's actually kind of been dismissed out of hand that it's even possible that mm -hmm. it happens in the colon and it turns out the colon actually does contribute to a, a really substantial amount of blood ketones in the mouse maybe up to 20 or 30 percent of the total blood ketones it's a really large number and we showed that with a 
with a genetically modified animal. And these ketones also have a health role. They're very important for uh, gut homeostasis, preventing in inflammation in the gut. Um, and that may be why fiber is so important for health, both in animals and in humans, because fiber is the substrate that gets turned into ketones and plays a really important role in signaling in the colon and preventing inflammatory disorders. So Do you next think time, that... yeah. What are you going to say? I don't know. I was going to say something silly. Go ahead. <laughs> but I was just going to say, do you think uh, the ketogenic obsessive people somehow are going to be able to, is this going to ruin their world somehow? Or do you think there's, there's a way? I mean, yeah, we could. Back in the day, I would have <laughs> tried to troll about this. I just don't care about diets right now. Uh, you know, because I'm, I, you're, I, you're not on Twitter at all, are you? I am, but like very rarely. It's just, I find it so overwhelming, man, with the amount of shit that's written there. And people are like, oh. people are fighting on there. Instagram seems to be way more chill, even though Instagram can be the same way. But then I got onto Twitter and I was like, holy fuck, I don't want to be here. <laughs> so I, I have a Twitter, but uh, yeah, I'll find you on there. Yeah, well, so the reason um, I mentioned that is that on Twitter, it's just like, it's so weird for me to think about the whole diet wars stuff that I used to post about because these days on Twitter, I'll post something and literally like several thousand or maybe tens of thousands of people will like, like a post about me, how I'm a piece of shit and like a Nazi and I want to kill all poor people and all these other things. And like, literally there was a post that got a quarter million views, uh, <laughs> like two days ago by a doctor who's like 80,000, 90,000 followers, um, just like cherry picking, like some of my most like edgy posts and like, or even things that like, don't even mean what they, it looks like. And then like post them all and like, just saying that I'm the worst person in the world. So now it's like, when I think about like talking about diets and like trolling keto people, I'm like, Oh my God. Like, it's so, yeah, it's so like what I did like a couple, a year or two ago, but it's like, now I'm in the midst of like people really like wanting to, like my phone, I almost had to change my phone number. Cause they were signing like people, like literal professors of medicine were signing me up to services and I was getting like <laughs> called every five minutes um, oh, no, because they, they because they act like children and they actually act like the people that they think that uh, I am they act like anti-vaxxers this is what anti-vaxxers do like they'll like, harass <laughs> so um so oh, they talk about this stuff is so quaint but like I, you know what I would say is if I was still like some plant-based troll which mm -hmm. is it sounds so cringe to talk about yeah. now but like if I was a plant-based troll I'd say like um, well, this is why your, your ketogenic diet should be plant-based because Ooh. you're going to get more fiber and you're going to be able to make more ketones. If ketones are important, in fact, I was making this point a long time ago, and there's some evidence in humans that, that, um, higher fiber diets, uh, may be more ketogenic and it may be exactly through this mechanism. Um, yeah, I'd say something like this, but then nobody would care. I mean, you know, like I get 10, 10 likes <laughs> but or What do you mean? What so. do you mean by that? How can you be ketogenic if you're doing, eating a lot of plants though? Well, you could do like nuts and seeds, right? Mm -hmm. Like those are, depends on which nuts and seeds we're talking about. Some of them are higher carb than others. You can't do like cashews or depends on what we're talking about. So we can't do peanuts, cashews, but you could do like stuff like wal walnuts. Almonds. I did a plant-based keto diet. Yeah, there are, there's literally a vegan keto diet on a Facebook group that has like 60,000 members. It's crazy. And, and you've so tested are, your ketones or you just kind of- Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Into ketosis yeah. being plant based. Wow. Oh yeah, for like a month or more. Yeah. So what the fuck? Were you just eating a lot of shitload of coconut oil or what? I mean, nuts, um, seeds, all oil? all sorts of different nuts and seeds. So there's um, so it was crazy. Oh my god, your shits must my... have been atrocious. They were they're great. It wasn't really. He, yeah, yeah, it's wow. crazy. Wow. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know why? I think it is. I, I think it is because. Um, when we think of like fiber causing these big shits, I think yeah. it's actually because the fiber is taking a carbohydrate down to the colon uh -huh. and that like, like, uh, starch uh -huh. and it's causing that to be metabolized by the, by the microbiome. But if it's fat, if it's fiber connected to like fat, like in the, in the form of, um, pumpkin seeds or, or walnuts or almonds or macadamia nuts or, um, chia seeds. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of different, I have like giant bins, like 20 pound bins filled with seeds That's still crazy, in my house bro. from the space of my life, which I, I don't know what to do with them. I keep holding. <laughs> How many grams of fat were you eating a day? 
Uh, roughly, I was like roughly. kind of bold. Ah, uh, um, trying to think of how my calories were. So my calories were like, I don't know, like 300, something, two or 300, something like that. So, you know, 300 but, grams um, of fat, 200, 200, 300. It had to be because it was like 200. Yeah. 200 would be 180, sorry, 1800, uh, calories. And then so 300 would be, you know, 2,700 calories. So it had to be between 200 and 300. Jesus, to, I can't believe you did that, bro. I've never even heard of it. It was fucking... pretty terrible. It was fucking horrible. <laughs> oh, okay. So shits were okay, but you felt terrible or what? What, what were the side effects? It was so unpalatable. Ah. So, and I think you had to be really a, a, a very much a chef uh, and be very careful about not like wanting to kill yourself after eating this kind of food. <laughs> I got to the point where I was eating these shakes that were the nastiest, grossest things I've ever had in my life. Bro. And I'd force <laughs> myself to drink them. And I think, I think the, the, the lack of pleasure or the, the utter hatred of eating is maybe part of the thing, part of the reason I just got tired of it and I stopped doing it. Oh but apparently some people can uh, maintain it uh it's just so unpalatable yeah but that's such a like a fucking it, it, it's like with all diets right when people say there's some people that can maintain it i'm just like and so what if there's that one guy that's yeah, just like fucking yeah. white knuckling uh -huh. it for 10 years yeah it's crazy he's yeah, just like i yeah. can do it and it's like okay <laughs> all right what does that really mean i don't know if that means no, anything yeah, exactly. at all 100 percent. Right. yeah that's what zealots say you know, you can do it. Uh, yeah, keto people, you don't have to eat animals. You can just eat the plant-based keto. That was the point I was trying to prove. <laughs> and uh, yeah, whatever. It was a dumb point. After I, after I actually did that, I talked to people who were like promoting like plant-based keto who are like in the vegan community who are like, oh, we're going to make keto diets for that can be plant-based for our community because that's what they want to do. I would talk to them in private and they'd be and I'd be like, dude, this is insane. And they're like, yeah, it is <laughs> insane. But a lot of my followers are insane. So it's um... <laughs> <laughs> this is the best clip right here, bro. <laughs> dude. So oh like, wait, but a yeah. lot of my followers are insane. <laughs> <There's> like... <laughs> Dude, and you brought up Denise Mager. You just reminded me. It's a thing that it, her and I talked about exactly that. She was saying she was going to all these um what was it? It was paleo then, right? She was she was the paleo girl. She was going mm. to all these paleo conferences, right? And like the presenter would go out and like present their wonderful like, like very, you know, brilliant pr whatever presentation and talk about all their thing and and then they go backstage and talk about all their fucking problems that they have on the diet. And it's just like it blows my fucking mind. It blows my fucking <laughs> mind. I mean, it's just I don't I don't know. Right. And you'd get and you'd get harassed if you talked <sighs> about it. If you like post about it. That's what I made a niche out of doing this. Like I made a niche out of basically trolling people about the downsides of of these diets. <laughs> um you know, for good, for a good cause, but like people would just go ballistic if you like talked about like any problem because mm -hmm. it can't have any problem. You know, it's a perfect diet and you just got to diet harder. And uh, if it doesn't work for you, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> and it's insane. It's really horrible. Like wow. that mentality is the worst, that cult mentality. Mm -hmm. And that, that cult mentality is also happening with COVID too, right? Like, all right, um, brother. Well, so just mask harder, lock down yeah. harder, ivermectin harder, booster yeah. harder. That's yeah. all you got to do. Yeah. And we will get rid of COVID and we'll live in a utopia. And it's only the conservatives and right wingers who are preventing this from happening mm -hmm. for our utopia from happening. Mm -hmm. So, well, brother, that's why I wanted to bring you on. I mean, part of the reason, like <laughs> I said, is because it, you went from <clears throat> Huberman to, you know, to I think at first you were very open about, you know, supporting everything that was going on with COVID, right? Oh, yeah. Like most, I mean, you know, why not, right? It's like, like you know, you. I feel like if you're in the science community, you know, whatever's presented to you at the time, you're going to support, right? Well, I mean, look. How'd you feel about look, it in the beginning? Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So what's more precious than a human life, you know? Um, if we can save human lives, like what other things should we be prioritizing over that? Let's say you don't care about saving human lives as much or you or or um the covid policy that we have is not something that you support so much why is that maybe it's because you don't care if people die maybe you're like a nazi you know maybe your worldview is that you feel like um um it's just okay for for sick people and vulnerable people to die well so for me uh 
the hallmark of civilization, sort of the characteristic, the defining essential feature, at least modern civilizations, uh, maybe not like the Roman Empire or like the, the Greeks or the, the pagan civilizations, but modern civilizations, post-Christian civilizations, is, is, is a concern for the weak and the vulnerable protection of the weak and the vulnerable that's sort of what is in my opinion the glue that keeps modern civilizations together once you get rid of that then it becomes um like a free-for-all of of people trying to get one up over each other and then the most powerful person is the one who who rules mm -hmm. so if, if you mean if you look back at the roman empire right if you read the books about uh, Roman history it's that they're murdering each other all the time they're like murdering it's like it's insane when you actually read like the historians it's like they're constantly killing each other the 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 Roman elites um because why not like if 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 you don't have a respect for life you don't have a respect for yeah if you don't have a respect for the sanctity of life or, or for the weak and and it, then it's a rule by the the strong that that um that prevails. So for me, I, I, I thought in which then I associate with uh, the, the modern worldviews with which that's associated with is going to be from the 20th century is going to be Nazism and fascism, mm -hmm. where they embrace basically, they try to re embrace this old, more pagan ethic. It's, um, and it was catastrophic consequences, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, that's why I thought the, the, the people who are against the COVID policy who are against like, uh, you know, who are against lockdowns, they're against lockdowns. They must be like, there's something wrong with them. Like they must be maybe, and I like thought maybe they were like fascists or Nazis or eugenicists or whatever, which is what I get called all the time now. Um, but yeah. it turns out, right. That there are more things uh, that are valuable in life than just every single life. So like, would one life, would it be worth it for us to protect, uh, for us to shut down the entire U.S. society to save one life? I bet no, most people would say no, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, to save how long? For a year, two years to save one life? I mean, most people would, there's a limit. So there are other things that are also trade-offs for human lives. That's the first point. The second point is, is um, maybe a lot of the policies that we have weren't effective in the first place. That's the second point. Um, and then if those policies aren't as effective as we thought they were for saving lives, and if um, the costs are excessive to save a certain amount of life, then we need to rethink those policies. And that's essentially, I think, the COVID critic or the COVID skeptics perspective. And I think it's a really important perspective because, again, there are trade-offs when it comes to these policies. Um, and some of these trade-offs are very large and some of these trade-offs don't warrant the, you know, or at, at least, at least if you, if even if you reject this perspective that I'm saying, at least you have to acknowledge that there are downsides to the policies and there are limits to which we can apply them. And we have to have a discussion as a society about what those limits are and about what those downsides are um, as, a, as, um, and everybody needs to have an input into it, not just elites, not just people from the upper class, not just medical elites, not just public health experts, but everybody, including some of the people who are the most affected, including the poor, the working class, the people who can't uh, telecommute with their laptops, who actually have to have jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just realized that all those people were being excluded from the discussion, and we should be including those people more in the decision-making process, and we didn't. Uh, we, in fact, uh, had one particular perspective from the public health and medical elites that was sort of basically imposed on everybody. And then we had the government then taking other perspectives off the internet and banning people and making sure that those other perspectives weren't represented. Yeah. Uh, and it turns out that some of those other perspectives were really important, even though they were like called conspiracy theories at the time, which is so crazy to like think about. And if those perspectives had been better represented in the discussion, then maybe we would have had better policy. So... The, these are the ideas that I'm working on. When, some when of the did, things you, when did your thought process start to change? When did you realize that like, oh, they did ban a bunch of people that, you know, were saying op that were, by the way, also PhD, right? Doctors, subsiding yep. stuff. That, that, now, look, let's be fair. 
There are lots yeah. of insane fucks out there that really <laughs> do not care if people die, right? On both yeah. sides, yeah. on both sides, mm, you know? Mm, there mm. was people in LA here screaming at me from across the other side of the street that I was not wearing a mask when I was walking <laughs> alone by myself outside, okay? Those are crazy people. And there's also yeah. people that are, you know, oh, it was all made up. It never existed. It's not a yeah. real thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nobody died at all. There's no such thing. You know, show me the virus. There's no such thing as a virus, right? So there's crazy yeah. fucks on both sides. But when did your I'm, I, man, I'm almost more interested to talk to you because uh, I'm really interested in how your mind has changed, because yeah. Yeah. honestly, looking back now, you know, uh, where are we at? Almost April 2023. To me, my experience has been with people that were on the left side that, you know, believed some of these crazy things. And then people on the right side, they believe some of these other crazy things that their opinions didn't fucking change at all. Mm -hmm. whatever they thought in uh, march 2020 is the same shit that they think now so like if you know they were like yeah i'm yeah we need more uh you know vax passports and we need to test everybody and we need blah, blah. and then the people that are on the right they were like it's not real it doesn't even exist still think the same thing i have not met many people that uh not like not even like a little bit of like a like a sign of like oh maybe they're questioning it a little bit my experience has been with people, at least maybe it's because where I live, I don't know, but is that, like I said, it's just been people that stayed on the left and the people that stayed on the right, and they don't even give a fuck. They don't even want to look over at the other side like, oh, wait, like perhaps, perhaps something, you know, maybe we shouldn't have done this or should have done this. That's been my experience, which is why I find, you know, you so interesting and intelligent because, like I said, I don't really even care what side you're on. I'm just interested that you... Are, are questioning things and and looking into deeper into them and I and I find you know I find that awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you. And I think people do change their opinions. Uh, maybe people who aren't like as vocal, you know, mm -hmm. people who are a little bit quieter. I think that that it seems to me that those people are. Those are actually the smart people, it turns out, I think, <laughs> like the ones who are not shouting all the time. Yeah. Like there's some really smart people who, you know, you talk to and, you know, they don't have any social media presence. They're not, but they, they're super smart. Maybe it's the dumb ones who, yeah, who talk. So um, maybe you're right. <laughs> to that a degree. Like yeah. You know that, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing I'd say is, is, is I would love to present to you a story where, uh, I'm just like coming to a greater and deeper understanding based on like an objective assessment of the evidence, but that wasn't what happened. So for me, um, I started making content. I think I want to say, what was it? It was like early 2022 or it could have been too early 2021. I can't even remember, but recently I started making a lot more like video content and making more content about, um, and so, so I was a debunker for a long time. I was just sort of aggressive about like knocking down uh like exaggerated claims and i basically had a pro-establishment perspective about this uh and i thought like the establishment was great and you know they may may make some mistakes but overall it's moving in the right direction and i think to some degree i still believe that but uh yeah but um at some point i said you know i'm not going to go out and debunk everybody as much anymore i want to like make maybe more of a of an online career as a, more of an influencer so i wanted to start Okay, not just like this guy's wrong, not just carnivore and he's wrong, but also here's what you need to do, or here's what is an interesting idea for you to think about. Um, so like offering something positive instead of just like tearing people down. And once I started to do that, I started to get torn down. So I started to get attacked by like the evidence based people, which they're not evidence based, like they're just like often they just have a pro or, or what we call it like an establishmentarian perspective or like, um, establishmentism they're just like mm -hmm. whatever is not like completely orthodox they're like oh that might be misinformation and they can always cite something to promote this idea like that you're from but if you're if you know the science really well there are important discussions to be had that are not just within like here is exactly what the recommendations are there's a whole range of other discussions mm -hmm. um which is worse in some cases the recommendations will move or whatever, but there's like a whole range of unclear area and scientific debate to be had. 
And so I started getting into this area because I wanted to like do something that was um, adding something different or adding some additional value to what people are already getting from whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just started getting just, just torn up and I was right about things. Like I was <laughs> you were laughing. It's like, it was, it's funny this... because it's like the people that look at everybody else and they're like, these fuckers are in the cult, man. They're in the fucking cult. They're just, they're just all tapping each other, patting each other on the back. And they're, you know, just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't realize that they're also in a cult. It's just a different yes. cult. And, and, yes. and it's just like, hey, you're also in a cult. And yes. you know, to a degree, it's like, we're all in a cult. It's like, <laughs> it's like the people say, you know, like, I, I don't believe in labels. I don't believe in stickers, <laughs> you know? And it's like, it's like, okay, as a mature person, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. You're saying that there is more to humans than just a label of like, you are Kevin Bass, a scientist, done. Like, I understand there's more to you, man. I, I get mm, it. Mm, but mm, at mm, the mm. same time, mm, 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 mm. You, you, labels make it a little simple just to mm. break things down. Yeah. And, yeah. and it does explain a good bit about you. So it's just like, just because you don't like labels, it's like having a label that says, I don't like labels. And that's also a fucking <laughs> label. That's my thing with these people. <laughs> so it's just yes. funny, man. <laughs> yes, yes. Like so the you, people who so say you, they're not, yeah. Uh -huh. So I was yeah. just going to say, so like, you went from being in sort of, they thought that, oh, Kevin is with us. He's part of the group. He's part of the cult. Yes, to now yes. just being just Kevin, just doing his own thing. Now they're tearing you down for, you know, thinking outside the outside of their, you know, thought process, I guess. Is that how it happens? Well, if we want to if we want to put a label on me, we can put a label. I I went from <laughs> Kevin the debunker to Kevin the influencer, right? Okay, okay. And for the people who are like very evidence-based and straight-laced, um that kind of stuff isn't acceptable. Even if it's legitimate, like mm -hmm. even if the ideas are legitimate, the same it's just um you have to follow the guidelines exactly as the guidelines <laughs> say. Yeah, <laughs> you think this is fun? I don't know why you think this is because, funny, but it's because like because it's funny to me, man. But like I said, it's like they're they're like no, like okay, we have to, you know, you have to do it like this because any other yeah. way is wrong. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what they did. So I would say stuff I knew was true. Like I would read the paper. I like. I know this paper hundred percent inside and out. Like I understand exactly what it's saying. I have complete clarity about it. And I would, I would talk about it. And then they'd be like, no, like that comes from the FDA, FDA science. This is what F current FDA policy is, but no, this is inconsistent with what like the current reigning consensus is in like the, the dermatological community. And I'd be like, well, maybe the dermatological community in this way is not, I'd start engaging about it. And they'd be like, you're not an expert. I'm like, <laughs> god damn it like i i know i know what i'm talking about like way better than this person that you're using against me like i know the better than this person i'm sorry mm -hmm. um you know uh so it just turned into this really dumb like me against this really dumb group thing thing and i just started having a light bulb that went on i was like oh shit is this how i've been treating everybody else all this time also am i am i have i been a part of this group seeing this way and pulling the same crap on other people that they're pulling on me right now. Mm -hmm. This happened to me, you know, not quite half a dozen times, but like several times. And each time it was kind of like traumatizing. Like these are my people, like, mm -hmm. but they're like, they like hate me now, or they think I'm bad now. And like, what's going on. And at some point I just started to think like, okay. Um, I just started to open my mind up to other perspectives more and more. Because I realized that um, I realized that what I had shut out, I had shut out not necessarily for rational reasons. Yeah, I had shut it out because it wasn't a part of my cult, my tribe, right? Because you're not supposed to engage with these ideas because these ideas are from people who are bad and you know, whatever. And in fact, I'll be honest, I started to have more sympathy for that. So I started to not just be open minded. I was like, I was like, um, I started having more sympathy for the people who like the people who hated me hated, hmm. you know, because, uh, yeah, cause I, cause I, cause I, I felt bad for what they were doing to me and I also felt bad for them. And that's where the COVID transition happened. Hmm. Cause I started to see that people who are called like peddlers of misinformation about COVID were in some ways just being mistreated for their opinions and the, for their feelings and the, for their differences and values. Um, 
if you didn't like lockdowns, it didn't necessarily mean that you wanted people to die, but maybe you valued freedom more. You valued freedom more than 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 taking this one particular outcome of of salvaging every single life that you possibly could. And um, you you may have valued just like living and 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 living a normal life. For me, part of what we call maybe the laptop class, all I did was just work on my PhD. I didn't go out and like live like a, you know, I had no life. <laughs> so it's easy for me to say, oh, you need to go lock down. I, I wouldn't even relate to anybody. I couldn't even relate to anybody who had a different opinion than that because that wasn't my life of, of like, you know, <laughs> being outside and doing things. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> So then I started to see other people just have different opinions, different lives, different values, different life experiences, different configurations of their life than myself. And those people with those different opinions are not just spreading misinformation. They just are telling their own freaking opinion that's different than mine. They're not like invalid or illegitimate because they're different from me. And I don't understand immediately why they're having the opinions that they're saying. If they're passionate about something, it's not because they're crazy necessarily. A lot of times they're not. A lot of times they just really believe in something different than I do. And so I started to see this everywhere. And I even to some degree, I see this now more in like the diet world too, because, you know, maybe people are objectively wrong about this or that part of it, but they have often they have values and there's reasons why that, that they're inclined to that perspective that are that go beyond science, but are still legitimate. I know that sounds crazy. We're not supposed to say that, but like, you don't necessarily have to follow the science, right? You can sometimes just like have your own feelings and beliefs and values that don't, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily need to lower your blood cholesterol and lower your saturated fat intake. Maybe free from your cultural perspective, mm -hmm. um, you know, meat plays a really important part of your, of your culinary traditions or your sense of identity. And then all these other things that are associated with meat consumption that are important. And those things are valid and legitimate and you're, you're entitled to have that belief. And that's just as legitimate as me saying, oh, well, look at Ansel Keys and all this, whatever bullshit. So, <laughs> so, so, so I, so then that's my conversion moment is just like, it's just like really feeling like, kind of sad about the way that people were treating me and then like starting to empathize with, with the other um, sort of like the other underdog. And so it wasn't me just like, Oh, I became to enlightenment. It was just like, you know, it's very base basic and, yeah. and um, like kind of normal psychological reasons that allowed me to see a different perspective. It's not that. Uh, so in some ways I was lucky, right? I was lucky to by dint of my circumstances to be able to see another perspective other than my own. And once I saw that perspective, um, you know, and I really saw it, uh, I started fighting for it and, and that's all the mess I'm in right now. So. Good shit, Kevin. So the whole kind of, good guys bad guys thing is not so black and white anymore is it yeah no. yeah man. even even the people who hate me now who 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 act completely terrible to me it's really changed my view of other humans also like my empathy and my compassion and stuff i can't hate people the way i used to you know because um you know it's complex but like everybody's just coming from their own place for their own reasons and it's not wrong, you know, like everybody's on their own journey. I know I sound like fur fru and shit, like, oh, like everybody's in their own their journey. Oh, and, and cliche, I almost, I almost, it's cliche for yeah. a reason, right? It's like people right, say yeah. it because there's fucking truth to it too, isn't there? I, and I didn't used to think that way, man. I used to be a dick. I used to like think anybody who doesn't like follow the science or do exactly what the science says is like, there's something wrong with you. You're ignorant oh. or you're, it was terrible, man. Um, Damn, uh, so the pandemic was a good fucking couple of years for you, man. The <laughs> it really was um, also terrible, but like well, terrible in a way. Studying and shit, right? <laughs> Sorry? I was saying, uh, you know, studying in school and all that shit or other ways too. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I mean, it was it was good in the sense I, I grew as a person, but it was it was tough in the sense that, um, man, you ha I had to face human nature. I had to face myself. Mm you know, and all the bad things inside me and all the things I had done and all the, the, the really intolerant ways I had behaved towards people. And I had to like, try to start rejecting that. And um, that was, it was hard to face that. And it's still hard to face it right now. Uh, but it's like, it's been good for me. Yeah, I'm like a better human. I feel so grateful for that.
um, because otherwise I'd still be an asshole. You're you legend. know, I'm still I am sometimes an asshole, but like I'd be <laughs> way more of an asshole. <laughs> You're a legend. Hey, I am too, and I know I have. I know my fucking Instagram account is just me, you know, making fun of people daily. But... That's so funny though. That's so good. I know. <laughs> but I try. I try not to ever make it too, you know, personal. I just, you know, because sometimes people say crazy dumb shit and it's just like come on <laughs> you don't have to say that so i just make fun of it you know and it's all it's i try not to ever be too personal because i i like you try you know try to see myself as not being a fucking asshole and just you know just tear people down for no reason because like you said i mean everybody's just everybody's just doing the best they can i get it i do think people yeah. sometimes are uh, are, <laughs> are lying through their teeth yeah. and are bullshitting you, you know, like fucking, I don't know, David Avocado Wolf, who's been doing that for oh like my 20, God, 30 David years. Avocado Wolf. Yeah, that's OG I, I, shit, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've been, dude, I mean, I used to follow that guy's advice, you know, for real. <laughs> like, for real. <laughs> you know, and he's still doing it, by the way, which blows my yeah. fucking mind. People listen I, to him. It's just, it's just like every year, because, you know, the people that get out of it, out of that, cult mm. out of that tribe yeah new yeah, people yeah, join yeah. the tribe and they don't know yeah. any better and then he goes. <laughs> and so that's why i'm like instead of like just straight up attacking him and you know talking about i don't know his giant fucking belly that he has i i would just make a video and make fun of him and i, I, have, I haven't yet but i should but um you know I'm, I'm just trying to give you an example i just make a silly video just goof that's all try not to be too mean <laughs> I don't know, man. Like David Avocado Wolf, man. I would love to it, like. Though, huh? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know him well enough because you probably know him much. But I just remember the avocado part. I was thinking about this like yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was like, he doesn't call him. He, I was like thinking, he doesn't call himself David Avocado Wolf anymore. It's like just David Wolf now, and no, it was no, only no. because Kevin. Kevin. He, changed he still his uses fucking... it. His middle, he changed it legally. It's David Avocado. Wolf. It's still okay, David Avocado. Wolf. So he changed <laughs> he, that. He changed it legally we, to Avocado. His middle name, I think. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. We have an avocado trend that was happening, so he changed his name to my Avocado. Yeah, and then he's like, he's like, posts these videos. It's like I'm on a on eighth day water only fast, and I'm like, he's like severely, he's overweight. All right, <laughs> he's like, like, come on. Come He's on, not you guys fasting at that? all. Yeah, I'm like, come on. <laughs> fucking eight days. Fuck off. <laughs> so, yeah, That's man, so I try funny. not to be ever too mean. Because like you, man, honestly, I experience it too. You know, I, you know, I'm a I'm a raw milk enjoyer. You know, I don't drink raw milk every mm. day, but I drink raw milk. I don't think mm. it's going to give you superpowers. I, I do like it. But, you know, mm. I'll get a, a DM or a text or whatever, and it'll be like, yeah, raw milk. Fuck all vegetables. And I'm like... <clears throat> <laughs> well, I kind of like vegetables too, <laughs> you know? And then I'll post something about like eating a big salad and then people are like, yeah, you know, animals are, <laughs> are toxic, you know? And I'm just like, oh God. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> so it's it's tough. Yeah. Cause it's like people will fucking box you in themselves for you and like, let you know what they think. And then you're like, well, wait, well, it's like, I live my life the way I want to live my life. It's not like, I mean, I understand we have to agree and disagree on, you know, on certain things. That's just life. But at the same time, it, it, I, I'm not like in your little tribe that you've created for me. It's just, you know, I'm in my own tribe and I can fully respect your tribe too. Unless if it's David Avocado Wolf, I guess. or something. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. Can I do that real quick? Do your thing, I'll bro. Do your thing. We'll just chop the middle. Go ahead. I'll be right here. Anyway, bro, what were we talking about? David Avocado Wolf is the last thing I remember. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about... Um... I think the the energy was like something like, well, <laughs> I was trying not to like be mean to people, be compassionate, empathetic. And then you point and then we start talking about how you make fun of people. I think um, that's like, that's not, it depends, right? Like if it's, if it's like a dismissive kind of thing, yeah, then that's like lame or contemptuous sort of humor. That's like, hmm. and nobody would think that's funny anyway. Like nobody would find that funny but i think what you're doing is like you're making fun of like the the extremes right you're making yeah. fun of how people like go crazy and they start getting into <laughs> these cults like because you know? also i myself have been in them yes. in and out of a bunch yeah, of, yeah. Mm -hmm. honestly you know and i've used to think that whatever fucking you know carbs are bad or whatever <laughs> I, you name it yeah. man i've been there and done that and it's not from a place of like i know better it's just from a place of like okay my experience has been and working with other people has been that this guy that says this is full of fucking shit so you know i'm just gonna make fun of him that's all <laughs> that's the way i try to yeah approach. Yeah, 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 I think they're, I think, and I still, um, 
Well, I mean, I'm still debunking, right? Like I'm still going hard as hell. Like the reason mm-hmm. that I'm getting into so much trouble and having all these people like tweet and like try to shut down my phone and stuff <laughs> <laughs> is that oh, is that um is that I'm posting these clips of like Fauci or Walensky or Ashish Jha, who's the coordinator the at the at the White House mm-hmm. for COVID nineteen. I'm just posting in clips of them saying stuff that's wrong. And then I'm like, yeah, this is wrong. Uh, This person was smart enough to know at that time that this was wrong. Mm -hmm. This person was lying. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then I'll get like a thousand retweets or 2000 retweets and like, I don't know, like 300,000 views or something. And then like med Twitter, like loses its mind (laughs) because I'm telling the truth in a way that makes their hero or their like, their messiah look bad Mm -hmm. um and they lose their mind you know i think there's still place for the kind of debunking i just think um hmm it's interesting i may just be in a different cult dude i may just honestly have switched my cult i don't know if i haven't like i said at the end of the day like (laughs) you know like people when people say like dogma it's like having no dogma is a dogma too you know yeah I just it's you it's will hard end to... up with a dogma, even having no dogma. You'll have some kind of de facto dogma. That's that, what I'm saying. Yes, That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but yeah. at the mm-hmm. same time, like I try to live my life in that way of like, cool, like I'm in my own little world and I'm but I'm open to also people are full of shit when they say they're open to exploring or like when people use the word like open-minded i think mostly they're just fucking lying you know what i mean like mostly people are like mm. you're I, i'm so open-minded and then you say something <laughs> that like completely destroys their <laughs> argument then then they'll say oh my god you're so close-minded right and you're like but like what happened to you being open-minded i'm just telling you like i have a different opinion like that should be a valid thing so what i'm yeah, saying yeah, like i try yeah. to live in a way where it's like okay some people don't agree with me. I'm like, that's cool. Like genuinely cool. If I can make fun of you, you can make fun of me. You know, I just try to, I try to not take life too seriously, bro. But like I said, Perfect. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you're getting at it perfectly. And I think this is the change. I think this is better, uh, which is that, you know, your views, your beliefs, et cetera, they're not related to like who you are morally as a person who like your value as a person Mm -hmm. they're just views and beliefs that you have and other people's views and beliefs that they have it's not related to their value as a person they're not bad people for believing one thing or the other Mm -hmm. that's just where they are at their point in life for the reasons that uh, whatever reasons that that uh, determined that Mm -hmm. and it's perfectly fine they have just as much value either way and it's like it's perfectly okay we can have a disagreement about beliefs uh without making it a disagreement about who has value and who who doesn't Mm -hmm. and i think that's the big change that i underwent is i just stopped judging people according to their beliefs Mm -hmm. we can still make fun of yeah but when you make fun of those people for having weird beliefs you're making fun of the beliefs you're not making fun Mm -hmm. of them you know you're right Yep, yeah, yep, exactly. Yep, because yeah. I know mm-hmm. that, you know, they have wives and children or whatever. I mean, like, pff, even I, if they're goofy. Yeah. yeah even yeah. if they're, I mean, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> it's like, really? You know, <laughs> really? Somebody had sex with Dave Asprey? Really? All right. Oh I'm, my I'm gosh. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I take it back. I take it back. It's just, Does he have kids? Does he have yeah, kids? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, yeah. So, I wonder what it's like to be his kid. Know, I, yeah, I, I wonder too. That's why I'm like, I'm like, damn, like that's interesting, you know? I don't know. I don't know if avocado has any. I wonder. I wonder. He, he must, no? I feel like he must. I have a friend Probably, that, that used yeah. to be on the in the inside circle, but I, I don't know. I haven't asked him about the kids. So anyways, um, yeah, try 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 to genuinely uh, live where people say like agree or disagree, but they don't really fucking mean it. You know what I mean? I try to be like like genuinely agree yeah. or disagree. Yeah, I disagree with your yeah. views. I don't think you're a piece of shit because of it. Yes, and I think that t- you know what I think that requires though. I think it requires uh, like emotional regulation skills and psychological maturity mm-hmm. to be confronted with something that maybe is a little bit different than what you're used to and that you want to react against, but then you sort of like take a step back and you allow yourself not to do that. And, and I think you actually have to develop that skill. You have to develop emotional maturity to get to that point. And um, yeah. And I hope, I hope more people can develop that because it seems pretty lacking these days. Seriously. Seriously. And like, that's what I'm saying. Like you'll meet people that will tell you, okay, agree to disagree, but then they'll cut you out of their life. I've had that experience, man. They'll just yeah. be like, I, like, oh, okay, like, no, no, no. I'm I'm cool with you, Kevin. I'm cool. I'm cool. 
fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. Like, yes. So you didn't really mean that. Like, that's what I'm saying. I, I genuinely mean that. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, look, some people you're not going to like. I get it too. You know, we're not trying to, like you said, we're not trying to be whatever fucking chakra Buddhists here. I'm just saying most of the time, try to just be like, cool. Okay. Yeah. I disagree with you, but I'm actually going to be friends with you and if we were friends for 10 like i would never do like if i've had friends for 10 years like just because if i disagreed with them on this one thing like it would never uh, cross my mind to just be like you know what dude i don't think we're going to be friends anymore like that's fucking it's stupid. crazy <laughs> it's crazy but that happens all the time it happens all the time yep um i can't i can't talk about this uh let me think so there's there's <laughs> give it maybe there, like a a whatever <laughs> somehow there, make up yeah 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 there is a person with whom I was working on a project before uh, I started changing my views about COVID. Mm -hmm. And um, we had known each other for like five years online, at least. And we actually, he actually helped me a lot with my PhD and, and thinking about how to go about completing my PhD. Uh, and we, I wouldn't say we we're close, but we were friends. But he recently he like an hour or two ago sent me a message like saying like um he like he he just genuinely never wants to be associated with me ever again please never contact him ever again and this just relates to the the views i had about covid and and yeah. and um it's crazy man like i, I lost whenever i made like changed the, i lost like 90 percent of the people who were like my associates or colleagues on mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. like 90 percent 90 95%. I'm sorry uh, that happened so, to you, bro, but genuinely dude, but genuinely fuck them and they <laughs> or or yeah. they have to come yeah. around. They, maybe they'll come and, around and then, yeah, it's 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 sad in a way. Not it's really fucking You know, sad. it's it's actually in ways, you know, you're right though. It's not sad because you really learn what those people are about. And then there are the people who don't do that and who are cool anyway and you know those people are legit, you know? Yep. You like yep. really get great clarity about that. So Yep. I've yeah, go, few, go, yeah, I've had go, a few of those go talk, experiences too. Go, Sorry, bro. So what I'm what I'm telling the listener is go tell everybody that you're a Nazi. Do it for about a year <laughs> and you'll figure out like who's really <laughs> test it, test it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, test it out, test it out. <laughs> but yeah, man, I was just saying that I, I've had the same experiences too, and exactly like you said, and at the same time. It has strengthened a lot of my relationship with some friends, you mm -hmm. know, like, mm -hmm. like, like you said, oh, you're a real one. Like, look, man, mm -hmm. we disagree on this one thing or, or a bunch of things, but like, I'm still cool with you. I think mm -hmm. that's really important. Like you said, and it's really missing in our culture today, no matter what, you know, what country you're from or whatever. I really think that's missing everywhere globally, man. It's just like, like I said, oh, you don't agree with me? Oh okay, that's fine. I'm open-minded. Like I said, see ya. Like just never fucking, like, what do you mean you're open-minded? What do you mean you're, you're not open-minded at all? <laughs> oh man. They can't, and they can't, they can't even talk about it. They'll like, they'll just cut you off immediately. It's crazy. It's insanity. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The, yeah. And they'll say they're open-minded, like literally like a few minutes before that point, you know? Like Dude. we can talk about anything. Let's talk Dude, about it. Like, I literally had real. that experience with a chick. I'm telling you, I was dating a chick and she was like, I'm open-minded. And I was like, yeah, me too. Like, I'm super cool. Like whatever. I don't know. I live in LA. Like I live in the most like liberal place ever. Right. So like, I'm all about you do you, I do me. I, so I, I think people being able to do whatever the fuck they want with their life is really important, you know, but then I would say one thing and she was like, okay cool ghost just block <laughs> never never saw her again i was like all right i mean i guess you're not that open-minded huh you're just like a little open-minded or something i mean i don't know what you call that <laughs> how long had you been talking to her <laughs> oh not that long thank god but yeah okay, okay. <laughs> not, not that okay, long thank good. god that's good that's yeah good. yeah no i yeah. mean it would have been crazy if it was like yeah i mean but i've had that relationship with some friends that i've known i had a friend uh same thing just was asking me some questions and I was answering some questions and I was like, Hey man, been a long time since I've seen you. He lives in another country. Fucking blocked me on Instagram. Couldn't find him again. And it was just God. And I was like, okay. And this was a guy that, you know, wasn't a best friend, but a dude that I've, I've stayed at his house. Like, Oh gosh. Yeah. You know, somebody I know. And it's just like, that's it. I'm gone. You know, but that's a great strategy, though. Like, I'll just go around and tell people, oh, I'm so open-minded, then I'll just be waiting. Like, all right, are you going to say, <laughs> I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Like, 
<laughs> so <laughs> let's see let's see keep yeah, that on yeah. reserve <laughs> uh, oh man so so well okay since we're talking about the you know topic of sort of changing your mind or exploring different ideas anything else you've been recently you know maybe not necessarily changing your mind but thinking about differently uh um no nah, man i mean i don't know i don't i can't think of anything off the top of my okay, head. okay. but i mean you know okay uh, so how about you know even though you know i know it's been beaten to death but uh, you know the diet thing but i mean have you <laughs> how's your diet looking nowadays it's terrible man it's the worst <laughs> uh it's really embarrassing like the way i eat is so embarrassing when i tell you um it's going to be pretty embarrassing, but it'll be fine. It's funny also. So we'll do it. Um, I drink like almost a gallon of milk a day. Like oh, a you're, you're, oh, so you're a milk drinker now. Holy fuck. <laughs> Block. Block. Yes. <laughs> and it's bad and I don't want to do it anymore, but it's so convenient, dude. You can just buy this $3 gallon of milk and you can replace like two at least two of your meals what are you trying to and, do try to gain weight or what you're just fucking around or you're just enjoying milk right now huh uh you know it was about gaining weight and being super jacked but right. honestly at, like at least you're being honest now you're just eat. you're just drinking that shit because you love it <laughs> oh, oh yeah 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 no I, <laughs> it was it was about that but then it's like it's so convenient man and it feels good to drink it like i don't feel bad after i drink it i feel good mm -hmm. um you know i don't like fall asleep um it, i can carry it around with me you know the only downside is like being the fucking dude who's like got this gallon of milk like try to drink it when he's in the library studying and people are like what the fuck is he doing <laughs> that's it's like, it's that, like you're crazy enough to be to be the bodybuilder with the fucking gallon uh drugs <laughs> at, at the thing but now you have milk in it it's not just water it's milk I you know, know? <laughs> it's so bad and people are like, why do you do that? And I'm like, well, I start explaining it rationally. And then like the conversation is over, luck. you know? It's like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, God. Yeah. So, oh, that's that's a, funny. That's a good one. <laughs> Listen, if, but come on, dude. Like, I mean, I mean, the, the best th the best thing I can say after I after I do that is like, well, I'd be like, well, I do also eat berries and sardines. And then they're like, <laughs> I just made it worse. <laughs> And vegetables. I love vegan meals sometimes too. I, I, yeah. I love lentils and like black eyed peas. They're the oh, best. God. You know, just just keep going with it. Like, oh my, oh my God, have you ever had a tofu scramble? It's actually pretty good if you put some hot, hot sauce on it. It's fucking delicious. <laughs> You're like, oh, oh you're my like, god! Oh my god! I found this new place in Austin, Texas. It's this vegan smoothie bar. It's so good. <laughs> it just blows people's minds, doesn't it? It's the best. <laughs> People just like don't know what to do, man. They're just like, oh I know, my god. I know. That, that's bro. That's how I've been living my life for a long time, honestly. Because it's like that's what I'm saying. Like, I love milk. I love vegetables. I don't. I don't know, man. And it's like just like you tell people, and they're just like you see it. Like the connections not connecting. You know, they're just missing each other, and then they're like, oh, like they don't know what to do with me. You know. <laughs> Because there's like there's a bunch of good vegan restaurants in LA. I, I don't go to them regularly because they're first of all they're just fucking overpriced, you know, and it's like so whatever. But every once in a while they're fucking good, man. Like I like it. It's it's tasty. But then like I want to go and drink some milk too. It's just like funny, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, that 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 messes with people, right? Like oh, the vegans yeah. can't deal with that, and then like the meat eaters can't deal with that either. Yeah, like, why are you at a ways. vegan restaurant? <laughs> yeah. and, and it's funny, right, that they both get are able to get equally as angry. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Like you watch Bart K or whatever, like rant on his fucking oh, YouTube God. channel. And you're like, K. yeah, you're like, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, I just want to give him some, I don't know, some ban a banana or something. He's just like <laughs> ranting. <laughs> and it's like so hard. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. But then, you he's, know, and then he's, he's, he's a, he is definitely a, a, an, uh, a, a disturbed he's... character. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know if. I would be curious what we would find in his basement. And if, if we just <laughs> arrived there one morning, it just went down. Like, what's in your basement? There's just bodies in there or something. I don't know, man. He's an interesting guy. Yeah. At minimum, it's going to be something really weird. Like, the, like it'll be something really weird down there. <laughs> what if it's a bunch of vegan food? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> just, just a oh bunch of fucking gosh. salad or something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, man. So it's okay. So, all right, all right. How and how's your training pro- lately? Are you still doing jujitsu and shit like that? So for the, the last three time? months, I haven't been able to train, but I started again and I started doing. Uh, so I was on. Uh, well, so for the San Jose thing, I went to uh interview at mind pump i don't know if you've ever listened to mind pump mm. they're just uh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. A fitness of course. they're they're cool guys they're really cool guys yeah oh, okay um, cool cool love mm. them yeah so so sal sal di stefano he gave me like access to one of their training programs and so i'm doing what's called like maps 15 and it's basically just like six days a week two exercises uh three sets of like eight to ten uh, two set, two exercises each, each of those days. So, mm-hmm. um, it's like really simple, nothing to failure. I actually feel great coming out of the gym and I'm, I'm not like smashing myself into the ground mm-hmm. and actually I come out feeling like better. I'm like, Holy shit. Yeah, that's that's probably how you should feel, <laughs> but yeah. I, I, yeah, it's probably how you should feel, but like, I've very often trained, like trained myself, like just straight into the ground. Oh yeah. So I'm like really enjoying this because, um, like, I feel great coming out. I'm, I'm like, oh my God, I should have been doing this a while. I shouldn't have been training like I have been. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I've been doing that. And then I'm going to start doing like grappling and stuff, wrestling, wrestling and judo. Um, Because okay. I'm not hot on the, the uh, jujitsu club here because the coach is like weird. He's like, mm. I like him. He's like my friend. He's like one of my old friends. But how, f- how far from Austin are you? How far is that spot where you live? Oh God, like, I don't know. Uh uh like five hours six hours like oh a lot, fuck a you're way. not close at all i for some reason i thought it was like a couple hours away oh no i'm like all oh, the way shit. across the state like texas is huge it's big yeah it's huge yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah it's i'm uh, all the way across mm-hmm. yeah so um but i don't have the money either so i'm just going to train wrestling and judo for a while but i'm really excited about it to start again um Judo's you know great, man that's what I get yeah it's cool because because i saw <laughs> like uh i saw black adam have you seen black adam i haven't seen it yet i haven't seen it yet all right so it's like it's a it's one of the rock movies and basically just throws people across the room and i would love to do that (laughs) like i watch it and like i'm so i have such an adolescent brain i'm like yeah that's awesome i want to do that for no reason like i'm never gonna do it like as as someone who grew up doing sambo you know in russia and shit like that that's what i grew up doing um nice when i when i first saw jujitsu guys like sitting on their butt i was like <laughs> what the fuck is going on here you know like imagine like you've never seen j- j- just ever and then you just you go out and yeah. two guys are facing each other and then one guy just goes <laughs> and just sits down on his ass you know what i mean as somebody who's like grew up like throwing guys you're like yeah oh, what the fuck is this sport you know what this I mean? is this is bullshit you probably thought it was <laughs> yes, bullshit i did i, I did i did i really did <laughs> Yeah. Do you still kind of think it's bullshit too, though? No, because no, 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 no. I, I know well, some, well, some, it's, it's some just like, guys, it's, they like, you know. No, no, no. It's it's just like any uh, sport or or whatever, um, a, any discipline, I'm saying. Like, you know, there's good clubs. Yeah, sure. Clubs. Fair enough. Fair if enough. You're tra- if you're training with Donaher, like, he's going to teach you how to fucking throw and he's going to teach you all that stuff. I mean, yeah. now, now yeah. if you're if you're trying to specifically dominate at BJJ, you're going to be, you know, doing mostly BJJ. But I'm just saying there's mm-hmm. like a lot yeah. of great schools popping up that, you know, do talk about wrestling and do teach you how to do, you know, judo and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But jujitsu still is often one guy sitting down Fair, you know, uh, well, like, the competitive, it, it the competitive jujitsu is fucking boring. I'm sorry. It's boring. Number mm. one. And two, mm. it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of that. Like, like I would be very, you know, it's always like, it's always a, I don't know. You're always like, fa- it's like a fantasy. Right. But I don't know. Imagine two, like, like a, a black belt BJJ. Uh, what is by the way where they is it IBJJ right? That's like the, the standard uh, IBJJF, yeah. IBJJF, IBJJF, yeah. Like a guy that does that, and then a dude that does sambo. Yeah, like, I, I feel yeah, like the sambo guy's just gonna throw him on his fucking head. Like that's what I feel like I, on the street, like in a right? real fight. Yeah, on a real street. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, now yeah. if he doesn't get thrown on his fucking head, then he's probably in a world of trouble on the ground. But but there's no ju- there's no gi. You know what I mean? It's it's different. You're wearing clothes. It's, you're not, I'm not going to be able to fucking take, take my lapel and choke me with it. Cause it's, you know, a, a t-shirt or whatever. Yeah. So are Sambo people equipped to, to do street fights and not like without the gi are, so are, or two, will two they struggle a little bit more? So there's Sambo, classic Sambo and there's combat uh-huh. Sambo. 
where okay. you're actually wearing headgear and you're wearing uh glo- you're wearing like almost like MMA gloves and you're wearing But you still wear a gi, right? You still wear a gi. You so still key gi, top, this, right? Exactly, and shorts. And and the thing is with the shorts, uh, yeah. with the belt, the belt is attached to the actual uh what do you call it? coat? We call it coat. Hmm. Okay. Um, so you can't like turn it around. You know how like in judo or in jiu-jitsu you can just sort of spin it around uh-huh. like if you grab from the back, yeah. I can sort of spin it around to the front, right? Uh-huh. In Sambo, that's not going to happen because there's loops, there's holes in the in the gi, so mm, it's just it's, mm. you can't turn it. So it makes it a little more um, w- whatever, a little more more durable, kind of in a way. I'm saying because it's yeah, harder yeah. to grippy, <clears throat> grippy. But grip yeah, but as soon as you hit the ground, it's sort of ju- judo style where you gotta you gotta make a move. You can't just sit there like in J- BJJ, right? You gotta kind of mm. are you gonna choke or are you gonna do something? Yeah, I hear that the Sambo people have much better top pressure than like jujitsu guys. Like they're really good mm. staying on top. And I think I don't it's just know, the that's wrestling why... background, man. I think it's just the wrestling yeah, okay. background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, dude, you can take any like really good Sambo guy and he will uh, wrestle the fuck out of you. He will, he will mm. wrestle the fuck that's out great. of you. That's great. Yeah. How long did you do Sambo? I started doing, well, I did a bunch of shit over 10 years, man. I, I did a, I did karate, I did Sambo, I did some, some of those, uh, sort of funky Russian style, weird, uh, you know, dance fighting shit, like Sistema kind of things, you know, not quite uh-huh. Sistema, but that style. So did a lot of that. Yeah. How come you don't do Sambo anymore? Well, there's only one tiny little school here. It's in a high school that does Sambo. There's a, oh you know, yeah. And it's kind of for kids and just, I don't know where else to go, man. And I've been thinking about actually joining like a, like a BJJ spot maybe there's cause I live You'd right You'd kill now. it. You'd maybe, kill it. How old maybe. are you? How old are you? You know, one of the KGB, Kevin. We keep it. I, I don't want to fuck mm, it. People mm, get mm. weird on podcasts. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> I'll yeah, tell you yeah. later. <laughs> but I think I think um you'd kill it probably if you have ten years background. It'd be awesome. You'd be like. But like I said, man, it just depends what I would want to do. You know what I'm really yeah. curious about? I'm really curious about um nogi, nogi. Yeah, that, that's what I do. Nogi. I don't do that's, the gi. I suck oh, so you don't so do gi at all? Gi. No, not at all. Oh. I hate it. Okay. Can't stand it. It's not. It's not real jujitsu. I don't. I don't want to do jujitsu in a bathrobe, bro. Look like, at what you. The hell is this? Look at you. It's not real yeah. jujitsu. I like it. It's I not like real it. jujitsu. Yeah. There's okay. jujitsu and then there's gi jujitsu. Yeah. Oh, look at you. Yeah. Okay. So it's, I thought it was just. <laughs> I thought it was just. Yeah, guys like whatever sambo guys, judo guys that thought that that's kind of weird. But okay, okay, it makes sense. So okay. So what, what, like what's too. what's weird? Wearing the gi all the time or what? Uh, what's weird? Yeah, well, that yeah, BJJ is so centered around like the the gi game nowadays. It's just all about you know that. I would say I would say BJJ is becoming I think the 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 most prestigious part of BJJ like the cool part of BJJ is nogi now for sure and it's mo- becoming more nogi. Okay. Uh I would say yeah for for sure BJJ has been historically very gi based but that's embarrassing. I think the gi is t- <laughs> <laughs> the gi is like the gi is the yeah. dumbest thing. It yeah. has nothing to do with reality. Spider guard and all these weird things that people do it has nothing to do with reality and people who are great in the gi like I don't know like I like if I hear somebody's great in the gi, I, like I, my level of estimation about their value as a person like goes down substantially. You kind of shrug not, your shoulders. <laughs> it's not real. Blocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do gi jujitsu? Oh, cool, man. Cool, cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Blocked. <laughs> no, uh, no, I just, I, I honestly, I just suck at the gi. Honestly, I just like no, but it's, it's just a different game, right? Is what I'm saying. It's like a completely it's totally different. different world. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. So what are you? Are you a Gordon Ryan fan? Are you a big fan of Gordon? Or yeah, what? or not? Of really? course. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I mean, yeah, I, I love Gordon, and but do you follow jujitsu much? You follow what's just going a little on? bit, just enough. I I follow UFC, but I jujitsu somewhat, ju- simply because of Gordon, I guess. Really, yeah. Yeah, Gordon. Gordon is amazing. He was amazing, but um, what's his name? And I haven't followed it in a few several months. So that's why I'm being an idiot about it. But uh, um. The guy he was supposed to fight or what? Nicky Rod, Nicky Rod. So Nicky Rod, Nicky Rod. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he almost, he did really well in the last match against Gordon. I he saw did that. super well. It I was really that. cool. It was really great. Um, I was really impressed. I, like, I kind of became more of a fan of him for sure. Mm-hmm. And I became, I was like, hmm, Gordon's like not as much of a god as you, you know, you'd think. Like mm-hmm. Nicky, Nicky Rod did really well. Um, but like still like, uh, yeah, but I can't become like a total Nicky Rod fan. I could probably say this if I ever, oh. if Nicky Rod ever, he, anyway, Nicky Rod's not the smartest knife, sharpest knife in the drawer. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, I could I feel see like, that. I, you know, like, 
like it's always going to be Gordon and Danaher, you know, like yeah. they're always going to be like the. Um, but it was very impressive what what uh, what Nicky Rod did with with Gordon. So I I became a little bit more of a fan of of Nicky Rod's as well. But mm. yeah, I think I think Gordon has uh, Aspergers. What do you think about that? Mm. We're talking so much shit now. I'm talking shit on everybody. Yeah, I'm we're talking shit about everybody. I, but yeah, something. He's, yeah, I, I, he's got he's on the spectrum, man. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I'm not a yeah. yeah that's I, why I'm not. A, I, I get it that he's trying to do the whole like I'm super confident thing, but it just doesn't rub it doesn't rob me the right way it's not like a super mm. it's not like i really believe it i'm super confident kind of way it's it's a kind of like i i want you to believe me that i am super confident in myself kind of he has thing a very that. interesting personality what is that it's yeah i hear what you're saying it's um especially did you did you watch the way he did the stare down on nikki rod during the during the match they had yeah like it's before a, it's a, they yeah, it's, he it's did really it like small dick energy, I would say. You know what I mean? It's no offense. Totally small dick no energy. offense. It's really weird. I'm sure he's yeah. got a hog. I'm sure it's fucking, but it's just the energy was a little small <laughs> dick energy. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Um, and, I, and it's funny why he does that, you know, because he's the best. He knows he's the best. I don't know. Maybe that's good marketing, though, man. Maybe that's, that's good marketing. You know, maybe, maybe that's, that's you know, like if he played this, like, oh, I'm quiet and confident like i'm i'm completely secure kind of thing nobody would follow him yeah everybody would, sure we follow him because we love I to hate him karate since i was in quebec <laughs> like a very very respectful you know, like i'm probably not gonna work yeah nobody would give a shit this is why nobody's given a shit about jujitsu until gordon <laughs> it's true it's yeah, because yeah. he's so he's got so much big small dick energy that we, we love him so much <laughs> no like i said i mean maybe he's like the the nicest guy sweetest guy ever but it's just yeah just the way it looked to me in that moment i was like man yeah. not really yeah, fun yeah, of that yeah. but yeah. i don't fucking yeah. know like you said it could be him just playing up his his own thing so it's like yeah. whatever yeah 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 i think I, I love i love gordon i i yeah i love gordon so He's pretty cool. I do think he's like, maybe both him and Danaher are on the spectrum, though. I think that's what makes him great. Oh, Danaher, um, most one hundred percent. This fucking guy <laughs> doesn't wear anything else besides a rash guard. Are you out of your fucking mind? Why does he do that, dude? That just—I yeah. I can't believe it. When I see him sitting down somewhere and he's got like a new one and it's like a brighter color, so you like see his tits like really like poking out of it. <laughs> oh, I'm just God. like. John, like it's somebody like my god can i don't know why doesn't he have a girlfriend that like tells him to fucking like hey john like i, I don't know this like i don't think any girl's gonna put up with him, I think <laughs> put up with him. it's just like this purple fucking rash guard I, I don't know i don't know i can see your fucking nipples i, I don't know about this one i don't know it's just yeah like, those guys are funny <laughs> Yeah, they're funny. Those guys are funny. But yeah, Juju is funny. Yeah. But he's a but he's a genius. I I I fully uh, understand that that he's taken the whole thing to a new level, and I you know props to him. He's great. Yeah, respect. He's a good. He's he's cool. Yeah, yeah. I would love to train there. Yeah. Well, I'd you're a few to. hours away from Austin. I, I used to have this delusion before I started the COVID stuff, like, and started just spending all my time doing this stuff. I and I was just training Juju all the whole time. I had this delusion I was going to like compete at a high level. Probably won't ever do it, but. I wanted to, you know, if, if only I'd start training, training earlier, I definitely would be the best in the world for, for sure. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. There's uh, <laughs> so there's only one school around you there where you are, huh? No, there's multiples. It's just like one that's, I don't have any money. So anyway, uh, yeah, I don't have any money. Okay. okay. So I can only. Uh, so just lifting nowadays to two, what is it? Two hour, would you say two moves a day, six days a week, two moves a day, six days a week. And then I'm going to start wrestling and judo again next week. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I do four days a week, so two days of judo, two days of wrestling, mm-hmm. and they just build my stand up game like, get really good at stand up so that I can throw people like in uh, Black Adam. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna do for, yeah. I saw your post and, about uh, squats <clears throat> and deadlifts, and I thought that was a great one to uh, rub people the wrong way, the open minded people kind of thing. <laughs> How do you feel it's about crazy. that? It's <laughs> crazy. Um, let me just, I want to be truthful because. It's interesting. Um, I want to be truthful. Uh, yeah, I think, look, the culture that tells everybody that they need to like squat and deadlift, it's not like this moderate culture where they're telling people like, oh, you know, go very slow and listen to your body and like mm-hmm. take care of yourself mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. just slow incremental progress. It's like no, 365 bro. sets of two. Let's go. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, and all of the and 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 it's they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. All of the videos that they post, all this stuff is them just like maxing out and like yep. turning purple. So that is that is the way that 
weightlifting is being betrayed. That is the way that people are going to experience weightlifting whenever they approach it. They're going to experience it through that mental model. And so they're going to go with that kind of intensity. I agree that in theory, squats and deadlifts can be great for, and they probably are in like some programs, like uh, like if you're training old ladies, for example, uh, to like increase their bone density and they're very rational and you're just doing it for this particular um, you know, outcome. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's great, but the way that it's marketed for most young men and the way that the kinds of programs that are built for them, uh, I think it just really encourages the kind of intensity that is going to cause uh, joint problems in the long run. I, I know for myself, like everything hurts, like every single one of my joints hurts these days. And that's because I trained the way that, uh, uh, I don't know about you, but for me, um, I don't know, maybe I trained too hard, but I just feel like the the culture that's around weightlifting encourages that. And I, agree with I think that. in theory... In theory, it could be different, but in practice, it is that way currently. And so people need to recognize and acknowledge that context. So Yeah, it's, it's dude, it's just like with the diet thing, though. We went from one extreme of like, because I mean, look, back in the early 2000s, 90s, I mean, there was certainly always a bodybuilding, you know, a small bodybuilding cult out there that people followed and dudes who train like it. But for the most part, I mean, chicks just went in and did cardio, right? And then maybe did a little bit and and dudes would either do bodybuilding or they would just kind of not or I don't know calisthenics and then I'm saying and then because of Instagram because of social media now it seems like everybody's deadlifting and everybody's squatting right so like to the other extreme where everybody's always using these crazy you know weights to do bench you know powerlifting became popular so but people are like so you, you said, come from you come from more of a calisthenics background it sounds like I did I did gymnastics earlier in my early in my life I did a lot of that kind of that's great yeah that's great I experimented with everything but I honestly I I didn't do like a I didn't do a a bicep curl until like I was in college man like I never really Mm. did it I just did a lot like I said I did martial arts so we would just do lots of calisthenics like you know pull-ups you know whatever fucking when did you come to the states I've been in LA since 2009 so I've been here for a while (laughs) from from Russia yeah 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 I lived around a little bit too yeah yeah well, you, ex- you, you expect like a little, like a hello, Kevin, how's it going? We took like this. This is why you're <laughs> looking at me like this, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I can, thinking about our conversation, I can, I can hear out something, but I could, uh, I, I didn't even notice it. And, um, I, it, you don't sound like you sound almost, you sound basically like a native speaker. I didn't even think that you were not. Uh, from the United States. It's thank you, uh, thank a little you. surprising. 2009, that's only 14 years. Thank you. So thank you. That's, I can't believe it. Must have been, you must have been um, learning English when you were young, right? No, I, I did a lot of lessons when I moved, moved here. Did a lot of, a lot of oh, wow. English lessons, stuff like that. So, wow. Yeah, that's just, awesome. You know, just a lot of practice. But, um, but yeah, man, but what we were saying about lifting and shit. Mm, um, yeah. Yeah. People are doing, like you said, they're not doing, Hey, okay, I'm gonna load the barbell with you know 10 pounds on each a, a 10 pound plate on each side and do you know 10, 15 reps. No, it's like I'm gonna do 365 five by five because uh, what's that fucking guy? Low bar strength. What's that? What's, what's his name? Like he's from Texas uh, too. You know I'm talking about low bar guy. God low bar. It. I don't know low bar guy. Uh, I can't believe it's slipping my. Come on, he's from Texas. Big old powerlifting gut kind of guy. The fuck? Uh, I can't. I don't know. Oh, somebody's listening right now. Probably going, ah, it's saying his name, and I'm like, I'm not sure, but yeah, I don't know about the Instagram stuff. I I I was started lifting before there was starting uh, strength. Media. The book, starting strength, Have starting strength. That? Okay, that guy. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah Mark Ripito. Mike Ripito. Mark right. Ripito. All right. right, there we go. Yeah. Anyway, so you know, it's like crazy programs that are intense, and for the average person, they don't need to do any of that shit. They they just they can do regular. <clears throat> You know, body weight squats, no. regular fucking push ups and pull ups, and just get really good at that stuff. And like you said, I, I've seen, I've seen lots of people fuck their back up. I've seen lots of bicep tendon tears, and it's just I, I learned that lesson very early on. I've got injured myself enough times to just I don't care, man. I, I I don't care. Like you know, what's your deadlift? I don't know. I don't give a fuck. Like I I really don't care. And I I also don't think it's very. I, the guys put it this way the guys that are like the best in the gym they're not necessarily the guys that are the best in, in a sport or strongest strongest doesn't really even mean anything like like look kevin i don't know whatever you can bench i i'm sure there's a dude out there that can bench way more than you 
but I bet you can grab his back and choke him out and he'll go to sleep. So it's like, right. What does strong right. mean anyway? Like you, you he'll yeah, go to sleep. Like, who cares? Who cares what 100%. you can do? 100%. And that makes that makes these meatheads really angry when you start pointing that out to them cuz then like <laughs> their their peepees shrink like several inches Even more. at that moment. <laughs> um yeah, it's like it's weird. It's a weird thing. I don't understand lifting, especially after training martial arts, like I no longer really understand like why I just I think they don't fully understand how easily they could be choked out by a skinny person. I they have no idea. They yeah, they have no yeah. idea. It's like how much if they understood squat. it. Yeah. yeah, like if you have, you can look at John Jones' legs, right? And it's like he can just. It doesn't matter what he can squat. He can head kick you, and you will fucking die probably. So str strong. It's just a. You mean Jim yeah. Strong? You mean like what specifically do you mean by that? You know, hundred percent. I mean, what am I training for so I can become a good couch mover? Like I can move your furniture? Is that my? <laughs> It's like that one I'm training for. I feel like, oh yeah, good for you. Pat you on the back. You can move my furniture better than anybody else. Like that's pretty much all that you can do if you just, you know, which, which I think, you know, that's actually an interesting connection uh, to this whole squats and deadlifts thing. I think if people trained more for function and trained more for living and enjoyed their training, right? chose a physical activity that they enjoyed as opposed to, you know, trying to put as much weight on the bar as possible and go to war with the barbell. Mm -hmm. I think that would be the, the probably the safer and the less injury prone way. Of course, assuming your activity isn't something cr crazy. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. you could have more, but um, yeah, I think, yeah, it's interesting. Well, you know, it's, it's a lot of dudes that are, um, uh, going to therapy at the gym. That's really what they're doing, right? <laughs> it's the truth, no, it's, right? I think it's absolutely the case. They had a absolutely. bad day yep. and they go into the gym, they put on fucking Metallica, you know, Master of Puppets, and they just fucking go, you know, five by five, let's go. And then, you know, they feel better. And I get that. So it's like, but yeah, I always, but long term, man, you know, yes. I, I, I've been training yep. for a while, for a long yep. time. And I know a lot of people that have been training for a long time. So, you know, I do it professionally. So it's like long term, the way that you're doing it actually, which is like, just go in, you know, instead of going three days a week and going balls to the wall and leaving the gym, feeling like you want to die, go yeah, every like day, that. Yeah. but don't go balls to the wall, but go every day. And then you actually, I'm loving like, it. Yeah. Because, because I think a lot of people yeah. are, including myself, honestly, sometimes you, you love that feeling of like, like I've spent, I'm spent, right? Like I, yes. I, 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 yep. I let it go. I, I let it out of yeah. me. And like yeah. you don't you don't get that if you just go easy every single day or, or, or easy a couple of times a week. But if you go, you know, moderate somewhere in the middle every single day, then you actually do get that feeling again of like, okay, so I worked out, but I didn't fucking murder myself and I can, you know, still do stuff. That's a really great point. So you're kind of bringing it into the context of like, why are people motivated to go to the gym? Why are people training that hard? It's not because necessarily... They are trying to get jacked, but the deeper reason, the reason anybody like sticks to it and really keeps doing it and like mm -hmm. actually ends up maybe getting a chronic injury is probably not at all related to necessarily directly uh, wanting to get jacked, but some sort of psychological reason. A hundred percent. I agree. I agree with mm -hmm. what you're saying. A hundred percent. That's so interesting. Um, so then, then changing, you know, whether people get injured or not, or really is about changing how they think about training so yeah, that's I mean, interesting their perspective even... on why they are in there you know because mm. if you want to get jacked it you don't really have to you know it's as we all know it's like it's a, so much of it is about the diet right so it's like yeah uh, you, you know you, i mean look if you want to have a good looking body composition right if you don't want to be skinny fat yeah you have to lift right you have to lift yeah but if, but if you're skinny fat chances are you haven't been lifting that much your whole life you know what i mean and so you know with those people it's like three sets of 10 to 15 will twice, three times a week, shit will start growing always. Mm. Right. So it's like, mm. you don't need to do anything super wild and you just got to watch your diet and then you can, you know, quote unquote, get jacked. Right. Right. The right. worst is when somebody's doing like insane powerlifting shit and they're not even competing. Yes. And you're not, yes. even, they're not yes. even competing. And yes. even if they are, they're not like getting paid or it's just like, dude, yeah. you are risking your fucking back for life or a surgery, you know, I mean, I, I've seen it like literally with my own eyes, tons of people get injured doing stupid, you know, crazy deadlifts, crazy squats. And it's just like, is it really worth so it? How, 
can we help those people, uh, Leo? Is there a way for us to help those people to get them out of that insane mentality that's going to hurt them? Or yeah, do we man. just have so to that's what I'm saying. So it, I don't know, instead of funny videos, no, well, it. I mean, at the same time, at the same time, there's going to be, you know, like I said, well, I think martial arts is a great a discipline to yeah. get into, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Jujitsu being yeah. especially that, right? Because but jujitsu also is very injury prone. I if you you like, need to go train. If you out go of train, the other ones, it, I don't even know. Terrible I mean, judo. You get really know. tossed and yeah, it, in your head. definitely judo's worse. Judo's how, worse than jujitsu. How about a yeah. uh, a boxing or a kickboxing class where you're not sparring? Hundred percent. Right where you're not uh, sparring. Not sparring. You're not sparring. I'm, I mean, you can spar. No, but I'm yeah, but to... but but okay, dude. If you're the kind of dude who's gonna wreck yourself powerlifting, you you're not gonna spar. go to one of those classes <laughs> and not spar. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's true. But well, I yeah, mean, you're... I don't know. I mean, boxing is pretty popular in like LA. It, there's a lot, a lot of boxing uh, gyms. And honestly, man, if you go, you know, ten rounds with with a bag, you can really feel good. You kind of feel like you let some steam. Yeah, out. but a but a power lifter who's going crazy and always risking their back, is that what they're gonna stop at, bro? It's they're true. not. It's true. I like you said, no. you know, we have to compromise somewhere, man. They have to compromise somewhere. Oh, uh, so I really think it is the mentality, man, because no matter what you do, if you're gonna go at it with that like hundred percent do or die mentality, you are going to get hurt. You yeah. are going to fuck yourself up. So yeah. it's really about helping people with that mentality. And I didn't even before this conversation, I hadn't realized that that's a very interesting thing, but I think that that's, that is, if I want to help people, cause I'm, I'm messed up. My whole body is messed up because of, of the intensity with which I train. I would like to help people uh, not do that. Mm -hmm. Don't, mm -hmm. don't do what I did. It's and this dumb. is from jujitsu so. or a little bit of everything here and there. I mean, like training. Mostly it was mostly lifting. from uh like lifting. Yeah. Oh, like, lifting. And, so not even jujitsu. Yes. Oh, no. Kevin, then you fucked up, my man. What's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Kevin, what were you doing at the gym? Oh, no. I was yeah. training like the crazy ass power lifter who wasn't competing, but like was pretending I was going to compete. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You see, so look, it was look. Just, it, for me, yeah. it was just, it was almost like, I don't know if you heard about Tom Platts, the way that he describes lifting. It's almost like a, a spiritual experience. Of, of course. For okay. me, for me, it was this like, spiritual experience. Like I'm, yeah. like I'm, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. Like I'm testing. No, look, you either get know. it or you don't. I get what you're saying, bro. Yeah. But not everybody yeah. gets it. Some people really don't like the gym and that's cool too. You know, um, dude, I get for what you're me, saying. it was like, it was like this, it was like this, um, how do you ex explain? Like transcendent like, experience of you. It really of, was. You're going the, above a very yourself. intense. Yeah, totally. It was like, especially those training sessions where I was like RPE 10 and I was just going and going and, and I remember those sessions looking back. I remember the way that people looked at me whenever I was doing that shit. Um, uh, like I wasn't even necessarily lads. making noise. Yeah, yeah, but like I was, yeah. Doing leg and, curls. Uh, you ever see him doing that, leg curls? You ever see Tom Plass uh -uh. doing leg curls? Oh uh -uh. my God. Uh -uh. Dude, he once his hamstring curls is what i mean you know once his leg can't get past he'll just start like it's almost looks like he's like fucking the machine <laughs> just going, ah, ah, ah. it's just like it's insane I, if you're it's so it, insane I highly recommend looking yeah. it up on youtube there's some clips of it I, I i've seen him here at gold gym he's he did a a seminar so i i was at it um good guy yeah that guy but see but again that guy it's not even had that guy discovered something else besides uh, uh, bodybuilding? Yes. He, he probably would have been crazy yeah. about yeah. that too. Yes, I'm just yes, saying yes, like, yes. I'm just saying this. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying he's yeah. crazy, but what I'm saying is, is this guy, he's just trying to, you know, transcend himself somehow with yeah. this thing that 100%. he found since the yeah. he loves it. So, I mean, yeah, it's probably just something that people are looking for. And, you know, but the point is, Ma you don't, you don't have to injure yourself looking for that. You can do, you know, you can, you can, there's ways to work out and train where you're still and, and transcend, but it still experience transcendence doing it. I don't, I don't know. know. Well, look, trans it's a, tra the fucking word implies that you're doing something above, you know, average. So right. Probably That's not. what you're trying to do, right? Yeah. You're trying to do that. That's what yeah. gives you the joy is like go beyond yourself or go beyond what's normal. This is why people you know, love like so. Iron Man's too, right? Where it's like, look, it's not yeah. super injury prone in a sense, in a, in a sense of like the intensity, because the intensity is quite low, right? Meaning like you know they yeah. can run, but the you know duration of the impact or whatever that you know once you do that, how long is a fucking average Iron Man? I don't know, seven eight hours? What the fuck is it nowadays? I don't mm -hmm. remember. Whatever, half the day, you know, you finally get to that spot. That's what people are addicted to. There's, I know a lot of people that are you know marathon runners or triathletes love that shit i guess it's a little yeah. bit 
safer because you're not doing crazy weights, but even they get injured, man. I know a lot of them. Are they injured a lot? It, it's more like nagging shit, right? That they just, as uh, I'm saying, because because the intensity is low. So it's not like they're going to like snap. They're not going to run and just their back's going to snap. Like you see guys, like how many <laughs> how many compilation videos you see of dudes like like doing oh, a bi- like doing a preacher curl? You ever see preacher curl compilations? Uh, I haven't. Oh, those I are the not. best, Kevin. You're missing oh, out. No. You know what a preacher oh, no. curl bench is, right? Like a Scott curl. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. the intensity of the of the curl at the bottom is the heaviest, mm-hmm. right? Because you're trying to get yeah, like, yeah. Like, you know, lower bicep thing. And it'll just snap mm-hmm. and you just see it roll up, you know? <laughs> those are great <laughs> so what i'm saying is oh it usually doesn't happen like that with iron man triathletes because it's yeah i mean i have seen some uh, uh what are they called um achilles tendon snaps i've seen some of those mm. so people snap mm. you know but it's more like nagging like the knees just eventually just get so fucking just fucked whatever tears yeah. everywhere meniscus <laughs> ac whatever everything all of it you know yeah the the recent david goggins Joe Rogan interview that I heard I, where his so knees curious. were like, <laughs> Sorry, did you, bro. did you listen to that one? Yeah. I'm just like, I'm so curious to see how that guy is going to be in 15 years. I'm very curious. Yeah. Very curious if yeah. he's going to, cause see that exactly. He's doing that, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's, yeah. and it's some, I mean, no, it's fucking amazing. It's cool. And he's inspiring yeah. a lot yeah. of people. But yeah. On the other hand, it's like, you're destroying your fucking body and you will pay the price. He'll pay the price. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I I hope he's gonna be all right in fifteen years, but I don't know, man. With the shit that he says, it's it sounds like I don't know. I'm curious how he's gonna be in fifteen years. I have no idea. Well, it, it was like after I learned about David Goggins within like a, a month or two, when I like threw my back out and couldn't get out of my bed for a whole week, mm-hmm. and it's like because I was thought David Goggins so awesome. So then I started training like that hard and then not, like I threw my back out and couldn't get out of bed. So <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, that I don't, I don't I like those stories because it's like, God damn it, fucking David Doggins. <laughs> Dude, I should write. Apparently that there are people that have written like rants and like treatises on why David Goggins is terrible for exactly this reason. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Like I said, I, I get what he's doing. I get that he's a big inspiration to a lot of people. But it's great. His books are are just crazy to read. It's so great. Like mm-hmm. I love it. I, I read the first yeah. one. Yeah, I read the first. Yeah, one. yeah, 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 yeah. I don't but know. Yeah, man. you know. There's definitely a way to at least get close to that feeling that you're looking for. I think without going that hard or that long or you know whatever. Do you do that? Or do you feel like you're get you get there? No, dude. I I'm like you, Kevin. I work out every day. I've been doing that for years. So so mm. for me, and I used to also, you know, do whatever four days a week, ten by ten. You know, Charles Pollock mm. programs of like German oh, volume okay. training. Wow, you go wow, like wow, wow. Pull. Oh boring. yeah, yeah. So boring. <laughs> well, ten by ten is boring. But he said, you know, insane shit too. It's like whatever German volume training. Mm. You ever try that? You're going upper body, lower yeah. body. You just yeah, throw yeah, up instantly. You fucking throw oh, up instantly, really? bro. If if you oh, go okay. hard enough, if you if you really okay. put like you know if you're oh yeah, if you do 12, ten by ten squats, yeah. Well, for example, if you do twelve chins, twelve squats, but like twelve RPM, you know what I mean? Like I mean, I mean, like you know, at, at your maximum, and then you go into uh, dips or bench, and then you go deadlifts, and you superset. Well, not superset. You do all that four circuit four of those yeah. circuits. You do that, you'll throw yeah. up right away, my man. Because <laughs> you know, you're going upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body, up, and it's just like, Ugh. so. I and I used to do that shit, and then it, yeah, and then don't recommend it anymore to go that hard. Mm. Look, CrossFitters are doing mm. it too, right? They're fucking doing mm. that. They yeah. love their Fran or whatever. Yeah, jujitsu guys are crazy. I I, I can't really talk about <laughs> training injuries and shit. Jujitsu is insane, and I go to competitions, and it's. It's retarded how insane we are. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's just part of it. You know, you, should I just give up on the squats and deadlift shit? I should just give up. <laughs> I just accept that, you know, like we say there's a way to do it. Maybe there is. But if you're in that phase of your life, you're just going to do it, bro. You're not going to. You're going to do it. Yeah. So let's be real, right? But like I said, I hope we should tell do. people about it, though, because, you know, this is the one thing we should tell people about and they should know because they shouldn't just like read what is that guy that, who's that like skinny old guy who uh brad schoenfeld mm-hmm. i shouldn't call him the skinny old guy but skinny old guy. he's brilliant obviously he writes great articles but like you know he's 
But all he posts is like, oh, resistance training is the greatest. It's this longevity intervention and stuff. Dude, it has downsides. That's all I'm saying is people should be aware of what the downsides are and know that there is an upside and downside. Yep. And if you're going to get involved with this the way that me and you are talking about it, mm-hmm. you run the serious risk of this downside. Now, if you're like a robot, there are people who are like robots who can literally tr- like program their training to be like very systematic and they just like build up and they don't get injured that like rarely, if ever. Mm-hmm. Apparently there are these people like these kind of like very introverted, quiet, like systematic. Like I, I think, uh, what's his name? Um, Danny Lennon. Do you know Danny Lennon? No, no, no. Anyway, he's this this nutrition guy, but Mm -hmm. he's a power lifter, but he seems like the kind of guy who could do it like this. I think there's people like that, but I think a lot of people uh, will, by virtue of just not being that way, um, just get injured. And, uh, but they, but we, people should know that this is a potential risk and we should talk about it more and not just like pimp out and say, it's the most amazing thing. It's the same thing with COVID, right? Mm -hmm. You can do the lockdowns, you can do all this other stuff, but there's downsides that we need to talk about. It's just sort of, that's, that is literally that theme of everything I do and everything I'm going to do for like the next 20 years. Just acknowledge Um, the elephant in the room. That's yeah. Cause like you said, like you said, at the end of the day, if you're young, dumb and full of cum, you and I have both done that. Yeah. You're going to go. I'm still, I still do that. I'm still an idiot. Honestly. (laughs) (laughs) Not. I say I'm not. I tell people not. So yeah, then but... you got to probably realize it in you and just, you know, just think about it. Why are I you love it for this? Stop. Show? I love it. I love I it. I'm going to keep doing you try- it. You know, it's like that guy that mm. I fucking, I know a guy that, you know, used to like do marathons and used to train. He had like a kid and like three, I mean, I mean yeah. a wife and like three kids. And it, is that you, by the way, you have three kids or no? How many kids? Do you have? <laughs> I have three kids. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I, I'm not talking about you, but I'm just saying, <laughs> but I, you know, it sort of started, I started to realize that it's like, <laughs> oh, okay. He's just ex- escaping the wife and the three kids. He's fucking tired of it. So, you know, there's a bit of that because he's training every day for four hours because he's got to do the bike ride and then he's got to Oh, yeah, run. I don't train for four hours, yeah. I'm not I saying you're do that. doing that, honestly, yeah. bro. But I'm just saying, you know, you recognize, like, why are you looking for this? It's a drug, bro. It's a drug. It's a, bit it's a drug. drug. It's, it's a, a addiction. addiction. So it's addictive personality. Right? Mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Like the self-obliteration and like the sense of, I don't know. It's great. Love it. Yeah. It's the same way. It's, yeah. Same reason I like study hard. Same reason I like write articles. Mm. I write articles that are going to get me into deep shit. Right. I write articles that people will no longer talk to me anymore after I write, after I like, I'm going to try to do another one. And my next one, I'm intentionally doing it to like be as provocative as possible. And <laughs> What's that going to be on? <laughs> what is you going to tell us or no later? Whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, it's it's like missing like basically um how the establishment spread misinformation about COVID and then mm. called the truth misinformation and then suppressed the truth. Mm. Yeah, I'm blocking and, you after this podcast, by the way. I just want to and you know, uh so. and we're gonna try to get in I'm gonna try to get it I'm gonna submit it first to New York Times. Uh but if not, we can maybe do Newsweek. Uh I have I I'm not saying I have carte carte blanche in Newsweek, but like my last article I can't say this on the air exactly how well it did, but it did yeah. incredibly well. Uh, and so I probably am able to get another one in. And, and so there, right on uh, Newsweek and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, but I, I like to push myself. Like I'm, I like to. I like to feel alive. I like to. Like we only got one chance here, you know. We only got one chance in this place. Maybe I'm just rationalizing my bad behavior, my mm-hmm. bad pathological. Nah, I but think you, you maybe you want to experience I, it to the fullest, which I yeah, I want to like push it to the limit. And I don't want to. I don't want to be like you know. I don't want to be like oh, I'm too afraid to say something that I think is true. No, I want to say the thing that's true. Maybe make it even more, you know, like st- even stronger than the truth. Like even more make it pop even more and then release it. And, and I want to know that I'm not afraid. Um, I don't know what drives me to do that. Um, maybe what, is, what, what is it? This, um, I, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to be on my deathbed and think back and think I shied away from life. So I want to almost push life to its limit to know that I didn't, I don't know what drives that. I'm not sure, but, but <laughs> dude, we, we do, yeah, own, as they say, huh? it, it really is. I, I really think, yeah, we only got one chance. So you might as well go to the fullest. So 
that's that. So, so I'm never going to quit doing this in every <laughs> way uh, until, you know, so till the end, but. Uh, I love it, bro. I love it. Um, that's maybe, maybe this is a great spot to end it. So this has been a great fucking chat. Thank you. Um, people can find you on Twitter, on Instagram. You have a website or something. Yeah. I mean, my website sucks. You can also, yeah, my sub stack also sucks. Um, <laughs> For now, you'll upgrade it. You'll push that to the limit too. You'll get better. <laughs> so I'll tell people this. I'll tell people my uh, my Twitter and I'll tell people some other stuff. But actually, apparently, according to the Mind Pump guys, you got to, you tell people one place it does better that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so my Twitter is just Kevin and Basque, E-V-I-N-N-B-A-S-S. -S. Um, we're also going to try to get together a podcast. I've got a podcast that I want to do with these three guys. We're going to do a pilot season if we can get it started. And then um, I'm hoping that will grow into something big in the long term. But uh, yeah, check that out. And also check out my Newsweek article if you guys are interested. It's about, it's a, it's a, it's a, something, it's something like the scientific community got COVID wrong and it cost lives. Mm -hmm. And that was a I'll link article. both of those things. I'll link your Twitter and I'll link yeah. your uh, article. So. Thanks yeah. for coming on, bro. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me, dude. Things you own end up owning you.